What's cracking, everybody? Zerfell Rose here, bringing you some Pokemon Go Badly content. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Color Cup. And yes, I don't have a Color Cup icon yet because they haven't put it out. So I I may do with what I got. All right? Don't judge me. Um, so real, uh, real quick off the bat, like usual, going to go through my top five teams of Pokemon teams that I think are going to do well in this meta, at least right off the bat. Obviously, as we go through the week, a meta can diverge and change and get condensed a little bit more as people find what works and what doesn't but right off the bat i feel like these five teams are good places to get started um and i feel like the nature of this cup is very rps why do i say it's very rps the top two pokemon form an almost perfect core and there's almost nothing in the cup that core breaks these two pokemon except for like shadow zapdos and shadow luxray which come on you're you're not <laughs> you're not you're not you're not using those and i mean you might use the zapdos i don't mean the zapdos but um luxray is probably not going to be something on your radar to beat toxapex and trevenant i just don't think so so um but we've got basically um a meta full of and if we're not if i'm not mistaken here it is water grass fire and electric for the color cup i think i'm not 100 percent certain but that sounds about right to me so let's talk about these teams right so trevenant wallring toxapex so this is the trevenant wallring core with um with a toxapex in the back as a safe swap now you could honestly use the wallring as a safe swap too either way you're gonna go is gonna be fine um you're not really worried about being weak to fighters in this cup so you can really angle this team really any which way you want based on what things you want to be able to beat the most but um you know like opposing toxapex could be a little bit rough for this team you really have to finesse or land that earthquake with the wall rain um for that reason i almost don't mind shadow wall rain if you can get yourself lined up to get that earthquake off but um something else that might core break this team a little bit could be like a fire type like nine tails or charizard now those things quite particularly um do require them usually to land the nukes and for a wall rain not to basically do wall rain things um because against uh, Charizard, you land a couple high school spears, you're usually in a pretty good spot. And against the uh, Nine Tails, usually an earthquake finishes its face. So it, it's, it can take some finesse around some of the fires. But in this particular cup, I feel like this is kind of going to be like our BBML team. Um, not really a whole lot in the meta that really core breaks this team to the point where it's unplayable, right? Because even the things that completely, you know, core break, you know, like Nine Tails, Charizard, like we talked about. You know, Trevenant can still hit those for a Shadow Ball and do a lot of damage, right? Like, everything on this team has play against the Core Breakers. It's just a matter of being able to angle yourself in a position where you can get to have that advantage. So, um, yeah. So, that's really going to be, you know, very few things that truly Core Break this team. But at the same time, you know, the Toxapex itself is a bit of a pain for this team. So, just be wary if you do decide to play this one. So next up, we've got a bit of a different team here. We've got a double flying team against the uh, the Feral Throne. Now, this normally you would think that we're doing a double flying to deal with fighters. But like I said, there's not really any fighters in this meta. What we're really angling towards is two things that deal with Trevenant. Because Feral Thorn actually does pretty well against Toxapex. Obviously, we know it does well against a lot of things other than the Toxapex. The Trevenant's really the main issue for uh, Feral Thorn in this meta. So we back it up with two pretty safe flyers, Charizard and Mantine are two that I've picked. However, you could certainly do, um, you know, different flying types. I think Mantine is just kind of like you could do with a Pelipper if you wanted to um, for a little bit more move pressure. I just picked Mantine because it's a good safe swap and I like it. Um, obviously, electric types would be a problem, but that's the whole point, right? You're trying to draw out the hardest counter here against the Charizard in order to let the um, let the you know Charizard sweep in the back. That's essentially what we're doing. And I, you're getting a core broken uh, to some degree by Galvantula, but that's only because Galvantula resists all of Feral Thorn's move set. And I mean, even still, Charizard can still put some pressure on it. It just, yeah, the Galvantula does kind of shred this team um, if you can't get rid of it with the Feral Thorn. So if you do run into a Galv, I would probably expect to try and stay in with Feral Thorn just because you kind of have to. Um, but maybe soft lose and get some farm or something. You could try it one way or the other. Maybe we don't play Mantine. Maybe we play something else to kind of, you know, give that a little bit less of a problematic view. I'll leave it up to the meta to figure out what's going on with that. But um, for the most part, though, the team is, you know, it looks super solid. I, and again, I would be okay with swapping out Mantine for another flyer that 
is in this meta that you could use. You could even you know run the Shadows Zapdos if you really wanted to, um, or you could you know throw in Pelipper. You could throw in Tropius here too, but I don't know if I would really throw Tropius along with the Feral Thorn because of that weakness to fire. Um, that's why I like the Mantine because it also covers the fire weakness of Feral Thorn. So. Um, She's just banging her toy against my desk, weirdo. Um, so that's going to be that Feral Thorn team. And I honestly, I, I do like Feral Thorn as in this meta. I think it's a super, super strong pick. You just have to back it up with things that are very strong against things like um, fire types. And I guess Galvantula, Trevenant. Like, if you can find something that beats fire, Galvantula, Trevenant, and also to a degree, um, you know, flyers, sort of, because they do pretty okay against uh, Feral Thorn. Then I think you're in a good spot with this team. I think Ferrothorn just needs a good team and it's going to thrive. So we'll go for the next team here. This is a slightly different take on the Obama Snow. What we've got here is Obama Snow in the lead and two things in the back that are weak to Trevenant, right? This team is pivotal around the Trevenant and also pivotal around the Toxapex, right? So Obama Snow just is super strong against the Trevenant in the lead not too good against Toxapex in the lead. So you're going to flip to Jellicent in the bad lead of Toxapex to draw out the Trevenant. Try and go for that Shadow Ball because you're running hacks. You've also got Surf, so if you are feeling saucy, you can go for, uh, you know, a bait to get the shield and then go for the Shadow Ball to get the shield. And you are not supposed to be under my desk, you little minx. Um, and then that's going to set you up with an advantage because then that way you can use your Obama Snow to farm down and then the Trevenant is out of the way for the Stunfisk to sweep in the back. We're not safe swapping Stunfisk because if they do have the Trevenant, it gets completely walled and they just free 300 energy by the end of that matchup. But I like this team because it does, uh, it centers itself around the Jellicent safe swap, which if they don't have a Trevenant, it can do very well in this meta. It's also an extraordinarily strong counter swap to a Toxapex safe swap, which you might see if you do win the lead, like say the Trevenant does, you hit the Trevenant lead, they safe swap into Toxapex, bam, you've got two extremely hard answers to Toxapex right there. I'd probably go, um, I would probably go with the, uh, with the, with the Stunfisk counter swap if they swap into Toxapex though, because there's a chance maybe they like Wall Rain or something in the back and you're fair and you're, uh, your, your Jellicent would do much better there. But anyway, um, yes, there are definitely some things that core break this team. I feel like that those things are few and far between. Um, uh, Obama Snow in the lead is kind of rough, but for the most part, this team has good, you know, A, B, B coverage. It's either strong in the lead against something or strong in the back. Um, as you can see with most of these matchups here, Galvantulas, again, that's one of those things that you really only have one answer to. But then again, as long as you don't eat a lunge on Obama Snow, you're probably okay because it does outpace the, uh, it outpaces the spider. And then Togemaru is another one that... <laughs> you're weird. I don't expect a lot of Togemaru, but it could definitely be a problem for this team if you're not careful. Um, and then Roserade and Sunshine Cherim, I guess, are also problems, but who's not? Probably not many people running those in this meta with what we've got. Let's take a look at the next team on this list. We've got Graveler Double Grass. Now, this is almost like Grass Hole, except we're not playing Razor Leaf. We're actually playing to beat the Trevenant. So, you, I, I put two grasses in the back here. And honestly, if you've got any two grasses that can beat Trevenant, and, and I mean, honestly, I don't hate Rosa right here, to be honest with you. Um, anything that here can, can beat the Swampert and other grass types, right? So, you could even throw Jump Pluff in here if you wanted. Um, you could throw um, Roserade in here. You could throw a Shiftry in here. You're just really looking for stuff that really covers the weaknesses of the uh, Alolan Graveler, which by itself has a lot of play against the meta as long as you can avoid those grass types. Um, honestly, yeah, and, and the ground types too, specifically like Stunfisk. Um, it's just, it's just so incredibly strong and spammy with the Volt Switch that if, as long as you've got two solid grass types behind it, I feel like it's going to do well here. Uh, obviously you're going to be a bit having a problem with Trevenant and that's why I'm wondering maybe if you want to play something that's not Trevenant in the back. I think Trevenant's just really strong because there's not many things in this meta that can just tank a Shadow Ball that without having a problem. So that's why I like it in this meta as sort of like a safe swap for this team exactly. Um... But, you know, otherwise, not a whole lot of things core break this team so bad to the point where you can't play around it, right? Yeah, Shift Tree is a problem for this team. That's why maybe Trevenant could be swapped out for something else. 
Um, Token tomorrow, I guess, is still weird, but it's squishy enough that your Graveler could probably do some work against it. And everything else is fairly neutral with the Token tomorrow. Like, yes, because Tropius is flying type, it takes neutral from the wild charges, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have play. It still hits reasonably hard. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not going to see an EXL Nuzleaf. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just not. <clears throat> so last team on my list here, speaking of the Jumpluff, we've got Jumpluff Double Electric, which um, this is a little bit more of a spice team, right? But I was trying to find things that could reliably core break, or at least somewhat reliably core break the... Um, this, the, the Toxapex Trevenant duo, and honestly, what I've seen here is that if we flip two of these to Shadow, Galv can stay the way it is. Um, you actually do a little bit better. Now, Tropius is a problem here, but as far as everything else, look at the wins that Jumpluff is picking up. It gets so many wins because of its moveset and bulk that I think a Shadow here is okay. I don't have a Shadow, so I won't be able to run it that way, but double electric in this meta, but both of these electrics specifically have play against Trevenant, have play against Toxapex. Have play against, obviously, Walrein because it's there. Have play against almost everything in this meta. So I like this double electric line a lot. I just think that it's one of those things that either you're going to go in when you see a lot of people running, you know, Toxapex and some other water type, um, or you just, you're seeing teams that do, that kind of revolve around the electric being weak, you know, being weak to electric. That would be the time to break this out. I don't know if I'd go day one with this team. I think I might wait a minute to see, but it's a really saucy looking team that I think looks really strong. And it could it could facilitate a good climb to better and really real early in the season. So um that's gonna do it for this color cup meta analysis. Again, I'm not gonna lie, this cup looks very RPS heavy. The very there are very, very few gem picks that you can pick from that will enable you to core break teams unless the opponent is running some weird stuff. Um, but for the most part, like that Trevenant Toxapex core is very hard to break, but finding things that can put good pressure on both of those Pokemon is a good way to go. Ampharos being a very good example of that. So um, again, real quick shill at the very end of the video. I should probably do it sooner because probably not a lot of people are around at this point in the video, but um, all these meta analysis, these teams have been in my Discord since Sunday. No, Saturday. They've been in my Discord since Saturday. It's now Wednesday, you're seeing this video. If you join that Discord, Five bucks a month, no less. But also, there's more if you want. If you want to do more, there's there's better perks to it. I won't I won't I won't deny that. But um, be, being for five bucks a month, you can join the patron Discord and you can get access to all these teams and these meta analysis at least a few days in advance. Sometimes I've got the teams laid out for certain metas like up to a month or more in advance, depending on the meta and how much time I have to look at it. Um, but like. You know, between that and the excellent community that I've got and the unlimited access to myself, my meta analysis, my teams, my strategies, everything is just laid bare in that Discord and you can ping me for whatever stuff whenever you want. Um, great place to be, great place to learn, great place to improve. So with that being said, I'm going to call it there. Maggie and I have a couple more things to do, uh, but we're going to... She's just so cute. Stop chewing your teeth. Stop chewing your teeth. You just grind your teeth. Don't do that. Anyway, that's it. All right. We're going to have a great rest of our week. Enjoy your color cup. Let me know how it's going. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a video or two up on the channel for it early next week. And we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.